All right, so hello once again. Welcome back to our third and final day of Startup. We really hope you enjoyed the first two days and gathered inspiration from all of the entrepreneurs we met on day one and day two. Um, for those of you who are new to Aspire to and haven't attended any of our Aspire events in the past, this is our career exploration initiative put on by the first uh, work team. We understand that figuring out what opportunities um, are out there can be extremely overwhelming and difficult on your own, especially during these uncertain times. And that is why we host these exploration type of events so that young people like yourselves can learn and network with industry professionals um, and other youth attendees and explore what is truly out there. Um, once again, Aspire is funded by RBC Future Launch. And so our $50 gift cards are in courtesy of their support. And again, in order to be included in the draw to win, you must complete the RBC survey and be present during the closing ceremonies in order to receive it. Before we officially get started, I will pivot to Sophia with our land acknowledgement. Thank you, Kristen. Before we begin, we humbly acknowledge we are on treaty lands. We acknowledge that we are on land and surrounded by water originally inhabited by Indigenous peoples who have traveled this area since time immemorial. This territory is within lands honored by the Wampum Treaties, agreements between the Ashinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lene, Lenape, and allied nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Specifically, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the Three Fires Confederacy, Ojibwe, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Huron-Wendat peoples. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture while remaining committed to moving forward respectfully with all First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We wish to express gratitude to Mother Earth and for the resources we are using and honor all the First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people who have been living on the land since time immemorial. Awesome. Thank you, Sophia. Um, so like I said, over the last two days, we've met with youth entrepreneurs from all different industries. We've listened to their journeys in launching and pivoting their business their businesses and side hustles during these difficult times. And we've laid the foundation on how to get started on building your idea, your business idea or its side hustles. Today, we are finishing off our event series with an interactive workshop by Futurepreneur Canada on how to get your business ideas off the ground. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. From Futurepreneur, we have Joanne Norris and Justin Holness. Take it away. Uh, I basically said, how are you? It's nice to see you in Nakoda. Uh, I'm here with my colleague, Joanne. She's currently on mute. If she wanted to unmute, uh, I think that her role here in the beginning portion is to really guide you through an introduction to Future Panor. Once we go through that introduction, kind of highlight who Future Panor is, We'll then go through uh, a workshop on business planning and cash flows, which I think is essential to the growth and development of any entrepreneur. I just wanted to kind of set the tone by saying that, you know, at working for Futurepreneur as a business development manager, I am not motivated by the loans and the lending itself. I'm actually motivated by witnessing and being part of entrepreneurs' journey to starting their businesses. Um, Growing up, I didn't have access to these type of resources. And so for me to be in this position, I feel as though I'm filling a gap that I never had when I was a young person. And to really make these resources that Futurepreneur provides accessible um, and really provide this type of interactive opportunity for the future generation is something that motivates me. It's part of my passion. And a big why is that I believe that through entrepreneurship, we can achieve self-determination. 
I mean that from an individual perspective, but I also mean that from a nation. And I think it doesn't really matter what color or creed you come from, what gender you, you identify as. I think self-determination is something that every human can pursue. And I just believe that in context to what we're discussing, discussing entrepreneurship is one path that we can get there. So with that being said, I'd love to, to pass the feather off to Joanne Norris and uh, she'll, she'll start us off with, with that intro to Futurepreneur, maybe a little bit about herself and then I can elaborate further. Thanks, Justin. Uh, yes, so my name's Joanne and I, um, I'm based in Vancouver, the unceded territory of the Coast Salish First Nations, the Squamish, the Musqueam and the Tsleil-Waututh. A uh, beautiful sunny day out here. Um, but I know all of you are based in Ontario. I used to live in Ontario, love Ontario, lived in Guelph, lived in Toronto. My husband comes to Waterloo. Um, so we, I am the director of Indigenous and Northern Communities on behalf of Futurepreneur. Um, we're, I'm going to talk about Futurepreneur, what we do, how we do it. Um, and I believe, Kristen, you have the slides, right? Are, are you doing the slides? I can share them if you want. I got them up. Okay. Um, so just for a little background for people, I don't know how many of you may have heard of Futurepreneur, but I'm assuming that most of you haven't. Um, so we have been around for over 25 years and our sole purpose is to support young entrepreneurs launch their businesses into the world. That's all we do. And we only work with 18 to 39 year olds. Um, that's our demographic. And we only work with them um, in the pre-launch and launch of their businesses. So in the very early stage. And we're a national nonprofit organization. And um, we, we have a team of about 90 people across Canada. And so as you, so the core program, as I said, is age eligibility, 18 to 39, um, that you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, um, that you're past the R&D stage. So for example, some of you might be thinking of developing an app. Um, that's great, uh, but we would not, um, you would be able to access some of our training and some of our events. Um, but in terms of our financing and our mentor match that comes with our financing, you'd have to be out of that stage. Um, and the other thing is, is you're either, you could be in business already, but not past the 12th month. So that first year. And the, why we're so focused on this early, early stage is because we were actually launched into the world originally by um, three of the big banks in Canada. Um, and they knew that they weren't serving young entrepreneurs, new, new entrepreneurs. So they, they developed um, a program, a project, which ultimately became Futurepreneur, um, the national nonprofit about 24 years ago. Um, next slide. So the core, um, the money and the mentor, this is our core business. So people can borrow from between five and $60,000 at Futurepreneur. A lot of people also, you know, they might be, if they have a business that needs more startup financing than 60,000, um, they might also be working with a bank or a credit union or an Aboriginal financial lender, which is what Justin and I, we work with um, those lenders to, to work with our Indigenous entrepreneurs. Uh, Futurepreneur does support all profiles um, and all genders of people, um, but we do have some dedicated teams for specific um, demographics. So in our case, myself and Justin, and we have two other team members, one who serves um, the Western provinces, uh, Sammy, she's based in Edmonton, and another who serves um, entrepreneurs in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, just to let people know that in terms of the national scope. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about the mentor. Um, this is a really important part of our program that really is a differentiator for, from other lenders in, in the startup space. And we do it for 
several reasons, but there are two main reasons. First, it's really hard starting a business. Um, you know, even if, even if you have prior business experience, which most of our entrepreneurs that we work with don't, um, it's still hard, hard work. One of the most important things you need is perseverance when you're launching a business um, because it, it does take a lot of work and time and energy. And so um, as far as our model um, it's really exciting that with everyone we finance, whether you borrow $5,000 or $60,000, we have a whole team um, that works with uh, mentors that we recruit. People like Justin and I are recruiting mentors all the time um, to work with our entrepreneurs. And it's, it helps the entrepreneur because we're not good at everything. Um, and, you know, maybe... Maybe you're starting a food product business and you're really, really good at making that product, but you're not so great at understanding how to sell that product and who to identify as your core customers. A mentor can really help you with that. Um, so that's why we, we um, match our money with a mentor. So I just wanted to say a little bit about that. Uh, next slide. And so what I was just talking about the, our core startup program is for people who are starting businesses uh, full time. It's going to be their main gig. It's not a side gig. Well, we have a side gig or a side hustle program as well. So let's say you have a job and you want to keep your job, but you also have this fabulous business idea that you want to um, start planning and, and, and developing and ultimately launching. So we have a side hustle program for just that person. And it's slightly different. Um, the money is in tranches of either 5,000, 10,000 or 15,000. Um, same kind of, of, of terms in terms of our interest rate and, and all that kind of thing. It's a slightly lower repayment uh, timeline of repayment, three years instead of five years. Um, it's a slightly uh, less, less um, comprehensive application, um, but still there is, you know, you have to submit a, um, a, business, a business plan, but it's, slight, it's a slightly different um, um, format than, than our core program. But you still get that mentor. Um, this program is, is really... Like, for example, students who are finishing up university or college or, or some other kind of program, um, that they might start a side hustle um, if they have a part-time job as well and they, and they, can, they, can, they have, that they have the, um, the resources, they have some income coming into the household, but they still want to do um, this side business. So that's why we created this about... Uh, six or seven years ago for, for the demand for starting part-time businesses. Uh, next slide. Um, here, I just wanted to say a little bit about the work that Justin and I do specifically serving Indigenous entrepreneurs. Um, and to give you an overview, um, nationally, we serve um, in terms of our financing and mentor matching between 900 and 1,000 um, business finance businesses a year. In Ontario, we do about between 240, 260 businesses a year. Um, Justin works with our Indigenous entrepreneurs in Ontario and in the Eastern provinces. Um, I, and you can um, switch the slide. I just wanted to acknowledge that entrepreneurship is, is becoming um, it's not anything new to our Indigenous First Peoples, um, but certainly it's getting more exposure and more opportunity for young Indigenous people to access training and support to start businesses. So I see this really as a real rise of Indigenous entrepreneurship that we're in right now. Um, next slide. And so these are just a few stats. Um, just showing the growth curve that over time, more and more um, women entrepreneurs, uh, women ind indigenous women are launching businesses as well as men, very much looking at launching a business as a career option. 
um, where before it was maybe not really positioned that way, either, you know, both by universities, colleges, um, but now it's getting a lot more traction, which is really exciting. Um, and this is one of our wonderful entrepreneurs, Catherine Corbier, who's, who's from Ontario, from uh, Northern Ontario, uh, from uh, on Manitoulin Island is where her First Nation is, is based. And she's an amazing um, metal worker and fabricator and artist. And she's also um, on our advisory council. We have an a youth, uh, Indigenous Youth Business Advisory Council that we connect to on a, on, a, on a regular basis to share the work that we're doing, share the insights we're learning about the entrepreneurs that we're working with and to get um, her guidance and, and input on, on our work. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight that. Um, this is another really um, lovely entrepreneur that we've um, that we've supported. Um, we supported her back in 2014, just when she was getting started, just when she was working out of, out of out of her kitchen table. And now, you know, she's grown that business over the last seven years, and she's she's quite a well known entrepreneur here in Canada. And uh, so, just want to show these examples as um, as role models. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're young and, and you may think, oh, I don't, I can't do this. You know, there's a lot of support out, for, out there for you. Um, there are people who want to see you succeed. People like Futurepreneur, organizations like Futurepreneur, like First Work, you know, we're here to help. Um, next slide, please. And this Kendall, he's kind of an interesting fellow we we supported him again when he was very early on I can't at least actually probably over 10 years ago now and when he was just starting Nietzsche gear in Saskatchewan and now we just finished um, earlier this year we hired Kendall to work with some of our entrepreneurs that we um, you know that we'd like to support in a coaching in his coaching academy that's another thing we try and do as much as we can a future entrepreneur is is buy from the people we finance, the businesses we finance, and engage them as contractors in our work, if it makes sense, you know, if they have an events company, if they have a marketing company, if they have a coaching entrepreneur academy, like Kendall does um, as well. And, uh, and we also profile a lot, um, a, many of the entrepreneurs that we support in our own marketing. Um, to give them more brand exposure and also because that's our um, that's that's what 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 makes that's what makes that's what makes futurepreneur um, profiling our young entrepreneurs is 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 how we share our success as well. Um, next slide. Um, and this is David, and he is a recent entrepreneur that we um, funded in Alberta. And just to give you a sense of the different types of businesses, so he has a consulting business kind of focused on economic development and community engagement, but he also really loves games and board games and the community that can come with that. So he kind of built that his business model to incorporate both. So we really do finance, uh, we don't have any restrictions other than certain restrictions around cannabis and alcohol and, and um, certain restrictions around jewelry. Um, and we don't do any housing um, types of, of businesses. Um, but generally speaking, we, we finance a broad array of types of businesses as well. So I just wanted to give you a taste of some of them. Um, and this is uh, a recent one as well. And she, uh, her name is Kiara, and she started a um, an online shop called Twin Feathers, and which is a, 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 a sort of really an alignment with her passion um, for healing and supporting other people's healing in terms of specific products that she can sell in her own shop. 
Um, next slide. And so this, uh, you can, you've met Justin and I, and then this is Sammy and Noah, who are also uh, team members. Um, but in Ontario, we have a whole team of other, of our colleagues who work with young entrepreneurs across the province as well. Um, and this just gives you a sense for um, how we on the Indigenous team, we work with um, our partners, our Aboriginal financial institution lenders. Um, we developed a role model campaign and we have a council um, that I mentioned earlier of Indigenous entrepreneurs. So we really, our job at Futurepreneur, yes, we do the financing and the mentor matching, that's our core business, but we really want to showcase our entrepreneurs and share our learning and, and work with others, we work with other lenders, um, other, other organizations like First Work that works with young people. And many of those young people and their members, the First Work members may have business ideas and need to access some startup capital. So we're very much part of a larger ecosystem um, of organizations out there to support young people on whatever career path they may be. A futurepreneur, the career path that we work with is launching a business. Um, and this is just an example of some of our AFI partners in Ontario that we work with um, in different regions of the province. And uh, we have an exciting partnership with um, NADF. Um, the, um, actually, Justin, can you pronounce yeah, the, the Aki Development Fund? Yeah. Aki, I couldn't remember the Aki, Nishnabi Aki Development Fund. Um, Justin is working closely with them right now. We've launched a, a specific microloan fund opportunity for Indigenous people in the territory that they serve that meet our age, age requirements. So we're really excited about that. And we're just about um, getting ready to do an outreach webinar with Wabatec. Um, so yeah, so just a little bit about, about where we're at with, uh, with our work with Indigenous entrepreneurs. And I'm going to pass the feather over to Justin, um, just to go over a little bit about what this startup timeline is and, uh, how we use it in our conversations with entrepreneurs. Thank you so much, Joanne. Um, you know, as we dive into this, I just wanted to emphasize that one of my motivations or one of my whys is to really help um, young people launch their business. And in that means of self-determination. So when we think about these concepts of, I have this great idea, I have a business plan, I have this great concept, I really wanna make it, make it work. The best approach to manifest any idea or any business is to reverse engineer. So when you reverse engineer, it really helps you figure out, well, what is your starting point? What is the macro level of things that you need to accomplish? So on this slide, the macro would be launching that business. Well, how do, what do you need in order to launch that business? Well, there's a pre-launch phase that helps prepare you to launch that business. And then the stage down from that is the development phase, having a, a minimum viable product, an MVP you know, basically um, maybe selling a product to somebody you know and seeing how they engage with it. What's the customer experience? In that development phase, you can kind of test your product and see if it works, if you like it. Maybe how do you want to pivot? How do you want to make some changes? How do you want to make it better? I think in some of our pre-conversations I was having with, with Kristen and Sophia from First Work, you know, some of the reflections that was coming out of the past couple of days is like understanding the concept of money a little bit. And money is really not about money. Money is about value. So what is the value of your business? What is the value of the product or service that you're offering? And so you can really dive into that in the development phase. And then the idea phase is where a lot of people seem to really spend a lot of time. And what I'm realizing is that the idea feels better. It's an emotional enlightenment. It feels better to have an idea in your mind. I have this great idea. I can't wait to get it started. You know, I really want to do this, this and that. And it feels great, but it doesn't feel so great to actually do the hard work, grind, grit, 
lift that heavy weight to actually manifest and launch that business. Because when you're in the idea phase, you can see that you're clearly three levels before you're actually in full operation and generating a positive revenue. So this is kind of a timeline that we've been able to determine at Future Panora that kind of helps us understand which phase you might be on and then how we as business development managers or even as Future Panora as a nonprofit organization, how can we help you take your business idea to the next level or your development phase to the pre-launch phase and launch your business? So this is just putting into perspective what the work we do frontline and what our goals are to kind of help you along that entrepreneurial journey. So to emphasize this, I'm literally going to show you what I wish I learned when I was 18 years old. The idea that entrepreneurship and starting a business is only for the wealthy is very taboo. Starting a business and being an entrepreneur can be a career path. And to be completely frank, I feel grateful that I've been able to make entrepreneurship my career path. Not only do I work at Futurepreneur, but I'm also uh, an entrepreneur myself. I have my own business. I'm an artist. I launched a streaming platform for Black, Indigenous, and people of color. It's for music and podcast. And I wish... I had access to this information. I wish when I was 18, someone just presented to me, you know, when you graduate high school or when you go into college and university, you can consider starting a business and here's how you can do it. So that's what I'm hoping you'll get out of this uh, next section here is to learn how you can launch your business, what, you, what it requires to build a viable business, and then hopefully we'll have some time for some Q&A to really provide some clarity on uh, the whole process that we're just going to show you. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm actually going to share my full screen with you all. Boom, full screen right on. So when you go to futurepreneur.ca, I'm going to actually do a little boasting here and go to futurepreneur.ca slash indigenous. That is our page uh, as a team. And so you can, you can access the resources from any of the landing pages at futurepreneur.ca. Um, a lot of the things that Joanne mentioned, you can, all, you can find here on this homepage. There's some more blogs of some other entrepreneurs we help finance. There's events if you want to really dive deeper into your business idea, take it from development to pre-launch. These are great resources. And then here is basically where all of the free resources are for you to take full advantage of because facts to create a business plan it can cost you anywhere from five thousand dollars or more to work with a consultant i'm not discouraging that because it can be very helpful if you don't have the time or you have the financial resources to pay somebody to do a professional business plan that's great kudos to you but what I will say that when you're getting started, I think that it's really important that you know the ins and outs of your business idea. And so the business plan is really going to help you understand the ins and outs, the highs, the lows, the market research, your marketing strategy, your operations, all the above. So this is a resource that you get access for free on our website. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, so just to show you where you can get it, you can go to resources can click on that. It's going to take you to this page. Scroll down here just a little bit to the business plan writer. Click on that. Once that opens up, you can scroll down to start writing. Click on that. And by the way, there's all of these other resources that can help you kind of educate yourself more about the business plan. Um, there's some videos, there's some other uh, resources that can really help you uh, dive into the nitty gritty and details. Um, so if you're somebody who really wants to know everything and everything about the business plan and the value of it, um, by all means, we've even provided you with additional resources so that you can uh, educate yourself about it. Click start writing. When you click on start writing, the first thing it's going to do is actually ask you for a login. Um, so it's just your email and creating a password. Once you verify that, you'll have full access to this business plan writer here. So what I really like about this business plan writer is that we are in partnership with BMO. 
not only are we in partnership with BMO on this business plan writer, but our team and, uh, you know, kudos to Joanne Norris for the legwork that she put in and the hard work she put in to develop the relationships with the Aboriginal financial institutions throughout Canada, which provide loans to Indigenous entrepreneurs specifically. But we've adapted this business plan writer so that it can be more of a reflection of Indigenous people. It can be a little bit more user friendly for, for the demographic we're serving. And uh, as a result, we're really sharing this resource through the AFIs and through NACA, which is a short acronym for National Aboriginal Capital Corporation Association. Um, so all of these things we're working together, which I think is so amazing that, you know, instead of competition, I like collaboration. And so this is one way that we're collaborating with our partners. So I'm just emphasizing that when you use this business plan writer, what you then have in your own possession is a business plan that is at a minimum standard where most financial institutions are going to recognize. Not only BMO, but we have partners with RBC, we have partners with TD, we have partners with CIBC. And uh, so as a result of this business plan, you are equipped with the resources that if you need to shop around or if an opportunity presents itself, you can be like, oh, you need a business plan? Guess what? In the pocket, you can pull out your cell phone, open files and click send bada bing bada boom you've just set yourself up for an opportunity for success so i really love this business plan writer for for a lot of the the value it's going to bring you as an entrepreneur and as i close the context before we kind of dive into it is that you know this business plan one of the questions or reflections that uh you know first work has also identified in our pre-conversations to this uh webinar today is how do we manage ourselves as a business? How do we manage ourselves? So this business plan is exactly what that does for you, is it provides you a GPS, provides you with a blueprint, it provides you with a map direction on where you wanna take your business. What are your goals that you're setting for yourself? What do you need to do? What are the reverse engineer steps along that pathway to launch your business? This business plan writer does all of these things. It actually does. And it feels overwhelming for me talking about all of these things that it provides you with. So just to go into short, because there's tons of tons of sections, but how this business plan works is you simply click on the section. It's going to give you a description of what is in that section. You can click on subsection and on the right here, it's also going to give you tips and info. So in that tips and info, it's also emphasizing and elaborating for you what else that section is looking for. We even go as far as a third step for you is we provide you with examples. So you can kind of wrap your head around, well, what does the language sound like when I need to complete this section? And we've even gone as far as literally copy, pasting, and then of course, finessing that language to fit your business needs. So we really wanted to do the best that we can to make it as user-friendly as possible so that any entrepreneur between the age of 18, 39 or over can create a business plan on their own. As a result of that, you're going to know the ins and outs of your business and not just the consultant that you paid $5,000. So you basically have a resource that is at a high value of around $5,000. You've already increased the value of your business. And like I mentioned, money is not about money. Money is about value. This business plan is going to help you increase your value. So that's really how the business plan works. I think in short, um, you go through each section you fill it out, make sure you save your changes. Um, I think one of the other things I'd like to highlight is in our business plan, we've even gone as far as providing some additional resources to kind of help you learn more about how that section might work and seeing examples from other people who've done it. So Destiny is another entrepreneur, Indigenous entrepreneur that we've helped uh, support. She's also part of our Indigenous Youth Council. 
And so she's um, been super generous to provide us with these explanation videos that also elaborate kind of what they're looking for in that section, how she used it, how it worked for her. She goes into some details, elaborates a little bit more on, on how it works and how you can use it. So I think Future Panora is doing a great job at being able to provide you with all of the ins and outs, all of the details, um, and really kind of handhold you without holding your hand literally to create a business plan. So with all of that being said, one of the most important things that I'd like to highlight in this business plan is, is your marketing strategy. I'm actually going to come back to this when we go into the cash flow, but I wanted to emphasize that when we think about growing or scaling your business, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, I want to start this business because I want to make a lot of money from it. And I know if I sell, you know, a thousand products, I'm going to make a million bucks. That's a great idea. That's a great concept. But how are you going to get in front of those thousand people that actually purchase your product for a thousand dollars? That's the big question mark. And so this business plan provides you with the opportunity to rationalize those thoughts and really strategically plan how you're going to get in front of those thousand customers. Because there's a rule of thumb out there. I think it's a 50-50-50, right? So if you have a marketing strategy out there, 50% of those people will actually engage on that advertisement. Those who click on that advertisement, 50% of them will actually go to the website or actually look at your products. 50% of those people will actually maybe put a product in their cart, not even purchase yet. And then there's another, you know, percentage of people who actually will purchase your product. And I think that end result is really dependent on the value you're providing to your, your customers. Um, so I think marketing strategies are really important. So to sell a thousand, that means you need 200 people on your website every, every month. Then you also need 4,000 people who clicked on your website and you need to be in front of 8,000 people when you're advertising. So what does 8,000 people look like? I mean, that's where your marketing budget comes into plan. That's why you need to create your video content, photo content, whatever you're using to promote, that's where you're gonna really try to grab the attention of your, your, market, your, your audience, your customers. And so this marketing strategy uh, is really a place where you can do all those things. You know, strategic partnerships is another really added value. Who are you working with to be able to really manifest your business? So with that being said, I'm going to do a slight pause and just inquire if there's any questions at this point. I can't really see the chat on my end, um, but I do, I'm going to open it up if you have any questions, because I know I'm, I'm like spit firing a lot of this detail and I want to just make sure that you're, you're there keeping up and, and I'm not getting too ahead of myself. So if there's any questions. You're doing um, great, Justin. Okay. I am I am I am monitoring the chat just awesome. so you know. Perfect. Right now there are no questions specifically on, okay. on what you've presented yet. Excellent. You're doing a fabulous job. Perfect. So I'll pat myself on the back there. <laughs> um there was one quick question oh. um that just came. Will that be? I think this is it. This is in in regards, sorry, to interest rates, but oh I'm 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 communicating with her about that. That's, awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Okay. So let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into the soup and bannock. Okay. The cash flow template I find is a resource that everybody should use when they have a business idea. I think that it's going to give you a perfect snapshot of what your, your um, profit margins are, but it's also going to give you a perfect snapshot of what is your bottom line? What do I mean by bottom line? Bottom line is how much does it cost you to operate and how much products or services do you need to sell to either break even or create a profit? So what is your bottom line? How do you get there? How do you know? Let's figure this out together. So in the same location as the business plan writer, when you click on resources, it's gonna take you to that same location going to scroll down a little bit. And on the bottom right, it says cash flow template. Um, since my director is here, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put this out and emphasize this a little bit. I have no idea why this download tool is so small. 
I'm not sure why it's the most important piece right here, but you click on the download tool and then it's going to literally give you this Excel sheet here. And um, you can use Mac. I have an Apple. Um, it does. It is compatible with numbers. So if it asks you, what do you want to open it with? And you're a Mac user. Um, I use numbers and it opened it up fine with no glitches. If you have Microsoft Office or you're using uh, uh, Windows, um, it should definitely work no problem. So within this cash flow template, there's four tabs you need to complete your past purchase tab, your startup cost tab, your cash flow year one, and your cash flow year two. Now, I'm not going to go into year two. Um, you know, it's the same as year one, but basically, Futurepreneur, we require a two year cash flow projection um, in order to see the viability of your business. So, another thing I'll, I'll highlight when I, when I hear myself say that is when you're, when you're projecting your business over two years, it's one thing to just put in these numbers and like, I'm going to sell 100 this month, I'm going to sell 1,000 this month. I'm going to sell 10,000 this month. Again, you can do that. But what we're going to do as professionals on our end is we're actually going to cross reference your business plan. And we're going to make sure that in your, your marketing strategy that you've, you've detailed for us, how are you getting in front of those 10,000 customers? So we cross reference everything so that, you know, people can't just come in here, finesse it, make it look sexy. And then, you know, here's 10, 10 million dollars. Um, this is clearly viable. It's like, that's great, but we want to see the details, right? So that's just one thing I'll add as uh, I'm, I'm discussing this. So the first tab, I think as a startup is pretty cool. Um, this past purchase tab, what we're looking for or what you input into that tab is all the things that you've previously purchased for your business. Now, why is that important? That's important because it tells anybody who's looking at this cash flow lender specifically, what have you already invested into your business? What is the value you've already contributed as the business owner? And how serious and how dedicated are you in the sense of the sacrifices you may have made financially to get that thing started in your business? Um, this past purchase tab is really helping you outline for others what value you've already invested into your business. And the value you've already invested into your business is what's also referred to as equity. So equity is now the value that you have already within your, your business. And the reason equity becomes important here is that depending on how much you're asking from Futurepreneur specifically, and I'll also kind of interject myself that it's also relevant to other financial lenders. Some lenders require some skin in the game. So what do we mean by skin in the game? Well, we mean how much have you already invested? How much capital do you have readily available? And so for a lot of lenders, they might ask for 10% skin in the game. You know, they might, if you're asking for 20 grand, you might need 2000. This past purchase tab, what it helps us determine at Futurepreneur is that if you have what's called proof of purchase, if you've been able to have a receipt or you have a bank statement proving you've made these purchases, this equity then contributes towards that 10% required. That's pretty sweet. So this past purchase tab is exactly for that reason. It's to help you identify what you've already invested, what equipment you've already invested, what material, maybe you've purchased a website, um, whatever it might be. Um, I use this template like literally every day, sometimes six times a day. So there's going to be lots of content in here already, but basically this is just examples of what this past purchase tab is used for. The second tab is called your startup cost tab. And I'm actually going to do this last because I think I really get to emphasize when I'm doing this, this section here, the value of our loans and lending and, and where some of the, the kind of um, where you can might fall between the cracks sometimes if you haven't done this work. And that's going to make a lot more sense um, when I do the, the cash flow year one first. But just quickly, this tab, you can set the date that you're starting your business. You could click the amount that you're looking to borrow from a lender. And you can also put how much money you already are willing to um, invest into your own business when you're getting started. This list here 
is basically your wish list in, a, in, in essence, um, what you need in order to start your business tomorrow. So if you were to open the doors and have your open sign, whether on your website or on a storefront, these are all the things that you need in order to start your business, which is why you're asking uh, from a lender a certain amount. So when you're asking Futurepreneur for 40 grand, 60,000, this is where you're going to identify why you're asking for that 60,000 and how you're going to spend that money. So that's what this section is for. You know, you can spend it on, you know, products. If you need to re up on products, if you're an apparel business and you can save some money by buying something in bulk, you want to, you know, save a few dollars on a t-shirt or a hoodie. And so in order to save a couple dollars, you're going to buy a thousand hoodies. Um, and so that saves your, your money a little bit buying in bulk. And so you can put, you know, a thousand um, units here at this average price. The average price, we're going to go back to a little bit. I'm giving you the details here. Um, so just take it with a grain of salt. I know that I'm, I'm using a lot of language that's financially, um, you know, literate that way. Um, I'm using language that I'm used to in having conversations with entrepreneurs. So, so forgive me if the language I'm using, the references I'm making go above your head. Um, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just really want to give you more than enough so that when you leave here today, you're more than prepared. You know how to navigate this stuff and you literally can do it on your own. So I'm going to give you more than you might need right now, but I think it's really just to empower you to be able to do it on your own. Okay. So that's what this is all about is you're basically your wish list. The second um, tab or the third and fourth tab is, is probably the hardest to figure out without having this workshop, without going through it with somebody at Futurepreneur to know how these fields work. So this field here is just labeling your product and service, okay? So what we're looking for is hypothetically, if you're a storefront um, or you're an online website selling multiple products, we're not expecting you to put every single product in here, $2, $20, $50, $100. We're actually just looking for the average. So how do you come up with the average? Well, if you go to our business plan uh, writer, what, what I usually suggest to entrepreneurs when I'm working with them is you can create a custom section. And in this custom section, you can create products and services. And then from here, you can start to outline what is your product, what is your services? And like I mentioned, we're just looking for the average. So one way we, you can do that is let's say product one is worth $25. Let's say we're selling t-shirts. You would then describe that product. You have product two, let's say it's $50. You would then describe that product, right? So you basically can make your list of these, these different products that you're selling and describe them so that when we're cross-referencing your cash flow that we can go back to your business plan and be like, oh, okay, that's how they came up with this specific amount. So once you've detailed your products, you can then look at what is the average product that you're selling. Okay, the average product, you know, bear with me, don't, don't criticize me if I get this wrong. Let's call it $70, okay? So we've, we've identified that the product average that you're selling as a business is $70, okay? We're going to go back to our cash flow. We've identified product in this next little section, average dollar of sale. You're going to put $70. Full stop. That's how that section works. You label it and then you put the price that your customer is going to be paying for that product. The next thing that I think a lot of people might miss if they didn't do this exercise, well, how much did it cost you to create that, that product, that average price of $70? What, what is the profit margin or what is the expense that it costs you to actually operate? So here's where you obviously are going to have to do all of that work. That's what all of this business plan is going to help you identify. You know, how much did it cost you to source your materials, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say, you know, for a $70 uh, hoodie, um, let's say it cost you I don't know if I actually use my own business, it costs me about $50 to print a single hoodie. Cause I'm not doing it in bulk. I'm doing one-offs cost me about $50. So what's 50 of 70. 
So we, we just to, you know, elaborate, you can't use these fields because it'll throw off the formula. You have to use it by percentage. So I'm going to go, what's 50%? Sorry, I have to back up here and go one just so that those numbers show up. 50% is 35. 60% is 42. 70% is 49. What's 72%? Boom, $50. Now I found my profit margin average of $50. It's 72%. So that's how much it costs me to sell a t-shirt or a hoodie every single sale. So that's how those three sections work. Label, price, expense. This last section is what we're really looking for is we're actually looking for entrepreneurs who can create a full-time income off of their business through the startup program. If you're a side hustle program, you don't necessarily need a full-time income, but this is where you can kind of start putting your salary. How do you come up with a salary? We're almost done, by the way. How do you come up with a salary? One way to come up with a salary is to figure out, well, what is your sustenance number? And I quote unquote, Chad, who's one of our entrepreneur in residence, um, he really enlightened me of, of what that concept is. So what is a sustenance number? A sustenance number is how much does it cost you literally to breathe every single month? What's your mortgage? What's your rent? What's your utilities? What are your bills? How much are you spending on your, on your cell phone? et cetera, et cetera. That's your sustenance number. When you figure out how much it costs you to live, okay, let's say on average, it's two grand. So I want to pay myself as an entrepreneur, as the owner of my own business, a little bit more than that so I can live the Gucci lifestyle. So I'm going to give myself $2,500. $2,500 goes in there. Now I have my salary. If you have a partner, you can put their salary in here. If you have employees um, or contractors, you can put that in here. Now without boring you with all the other details here the rest of this section is all of the things that it costs you to operate your business every month so i'm not going to go through each one of these sections you can obviously update these as you go um, but what we're looking for is just how much does it cost you to operate so i'm just going to put this large number in this section it's completely irrelevant you're supposed to obviously detail each one of these to come up with the amount but let's say all of the expenses to operate monthly cost me about $1,200. On top of my salary, it's $2,500. So for a total, this is what I was getting excited about introducing the cash flow. For a total, in order to pay myself $2,500 and operate my business full time, it costs me $3,700 a month. That is my bottom line. Now, how do I pay for that? So this is where you can start to finesse your, your cash flow. So there's a few things you need to do. The first thing, just to figure out what your bottom line, how many of these things do I need to sell to make profit? Let's just guesstimate here. What does 20 bring me? And at the bottom, you can see if you're in profit or in deficit. I'm short three grand. All right, let's double this. 40. Am I reaching profit yet? Still short 3,000. Let's go to 55. What are we at? Still short. Let's go to 100. What are we at? Thousand dollars short. 125. We're still short. 200. Close. 80 dollars. 205. Boom. 31 dollars profit. So now I've reached my bottom line. In order for me to make money by paying myself and paying for my monthly expenses, I need to sell 205 hoodies at $70. Boom. I have my bottom line. So to, in closing, in closing, obviously you may or may not necessarily already be selling 205. <clears throat> so what are you selling? So let's just copy paste this amount here. Let's say you start to really brainstorm on your own. Well, what am I already doing or what am I capable of doing as a startup? Well, I have, you know, I got three people who live at home with me. I got an annoying sister. I have a mom and dad, you know, blessings to the creator that both your parents live together. Um, I have, you know, some friends of friends. Maybe in my circle, I got about 20 peeps I can sell this hoodie to. All right. So now I know that you're still going to need $3,000 to actually pay yourself, to pay for your business and be in the plus. So why are we talking about up to $60,000 from Futurepreneur? 
Well, that's what I think the beauty of lending is. The beauty of, of debt, I like to refer debt as leverage. If you can leverage other people's money to help your business create a profit, definitely do it. That's what all the wealthy people have done. That's the common practice. And it's how you can build a successful business. So I need three, $3,300 on top of what I was asking for in my wish list. That's sometimes the gap entrepreneurs miss. They know how much they might need to get started, but they don't necessarily know how much they need in the operating side of things. So you got to add those two rates together, your, your wish list plus this little bit of leverage. So if I was asking Futurepreneur for 20 grand to pay for all of these items, let's say I had all these items mapped out, right? I'm going to just do 20 grand. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, I, I, wanted, I needed 20 grand to be able to pay for my startup and get it launched. Boom, everything's in balance. But guess what? I'm still short three grand. So that's why you can now go back here and be like, okay, Futurepreneur, I'm going to ask for $25,000 because it's going to pay for my, my startup costs. It's also going to leverage me that three grand that I needed for that first month. And it's going to get a, give me a little bit of cushion before I get to that profit margin of, of reaching my, my bottom line. Let's say that's six months down the road. So in short, in closing, that's how this cash flow works. It really helps you project the ins and outs of your business how you can finesse these numbers to work in your favor. What are your goals? How do you cross-reference that in your business plan? You know, what are the details? That is literally the hard lifting. This is what I meant. I was, I was literally warning everybody in the beginning here that the idea feels better. It feels better to have the idea, yo, I have this great thought, but it's a lot of grind and grit to actually take that thought, reverse engineer it, put it into paper, and now you have a clear journey and a clear GPS on how you can get there. I wish somebody showed that to me because then I could have been working on that months by months, weeks by weeks, maybe even years by years. And I'd have this really cool business plan, really cool cash flow. Just as a fun fact, I've actually adopted the Futurepreneur cash flow for my own personal financing. So going through my sustenance, I use the cash flow to identify these things. Am I generating a profit at the end of the month just as a human being? So the cash flow can be totally diversified. I know the demographic we're, we're sharing in front of today is, is fairly young, but I think if I was a young person in your shoes and somebody showed me the secrets and, and really the ins and outs on how to launch a business, I would be excited whether I got everything he was saying to me or not. This guy thinks he's too cool you know, but I'm going to give it a try anyways. And I think that's the whole reason I'm really just trying to inspire you. I'm motivating you because like I said, I believe that through entrepreneurship, we can achieve self-determination. So I appreciate your time and we're here for questions. I hope we have time for questions. I'm literally right on the dot of 2 p.m. Uh, I want to thank Kristen and First Work for inviting myself and, and Joanne, my amazing uh, director, to be able to present to you all today. So wash day, miigwech, and, and I hope you learned some. Thank you. Awesome, Justin. I just wanted, there are um, a couple questions just at the end here. And I, you already kind of, um, mentioned the budget resource one and how you integrate it just in your life personally. Yeah. Um, Sheba asks the spreadsheet, does the spreadsheet come with the free business plan or with joining the program? Do you want to sure. explain sort of how the resources works versus applying for financing? Yeah, absolutely. So if I just share my screen again, really quick, um, to access both of these free things, as I was mentioning, is just clicking on resources and then they're both, both, both there. So the business plan writer and the cash flow, they're separate, but they are free and complimentary. Those are the two things that you need to apply for financing from entrep um, through Futurepreneur. So you need a business plan and a cash flow. Um, and the beauty about um, the business development managers and the team that Joanne has created for Indigenous entrepreneurs, including myself, Noah and Sammy that she mentioned, um, our job is to help increase your viability for your application. So we'll literally go through your business plan with you, go through your cash flow with you, really in brief, 
and uh, really prepare you for the application. But that's our job. I think Futurepreneur mm -hmm. does one of the best jobs at helping you along that entrepreneurial journey to really launch your business. So mm -hmm. it's definitely free, definitely complimentary. Download it today and start your business today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just, and just to reiterate too, um, we work with all demographics, Futurepreneur, it, the main thing is age, 18 to 39. That's a restriction that won't change. Um, that's, uh, those are our people. And then Justin and I work and our other team members work with the Indigenous entrepreneurs that come to us. We have dedicated team members. We have, I think there's about 30 of, 30 to 35 of the 90 full-time staff at Futurepreneur are, are people like Justin and I that are we're the, on the business development team. So out there in the community wanting to make the, we're the first point of contact for young people um, wanting to learn more about being an entrepreneur. I mean, we get people that come to us, you know, they've got a plan, they need money. We're all about getting that first bit of working capital. And then you get a mentor too. Um, but if you're earlier stage, um, I encourage you to sign up and get connected because that's how you can build a relationship with, with whether it's Justin or somebody else on our team and come to our free training. We do lots of training uh, nationally. Of course, now it used to be in person and now it's, um, now it's uh, you know, on the flat screen. Um, Elki, if I'm pronouncing your name right. Nice to see your face. Thank you, uh, and Joanne, thank you for also answering my questions from earlier. Um, so, Sego, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a business major, so I studied both domestically and internationally. And I currently work for, I know Joanne, I gave you my quick little sales yeah. pitch myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, really I currently, background. yeah, I currently work actually for a non-for-profit Indigenous agency helping assist Indigenous youth, our mandate is age 15 to 30, uh, find meaningful em employment. And um, I, I love how you have this mentorship concept and, and, and built in with it. I think it's amazing. That's currently actually something that I'm doing voluntarily with um, individuals on my local reservation um, is offering free consultation on their business and their, their model scheme. Mm -hmm. um, I do have some questions though about the mentors. How do you vet them and how do you pair them mm -hmm. with appropriate candidates? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like awesome. Go awesome. ahead. So yeah. this is actually an exciting response for me right now because of some recent uh, success stories around the mentorship element. To give you the, the normal process, we have a huge pool of mentors that Joanne emphasized in her intro. Um, you just have to kind of outline the criteria of what you're looking for as a mentor. And if you really want, I can, I can indulge me uh, with two seconds here. I have a, a, like a, my own login. So in the application portal, once you've, there's two different portals, but when you're ready to apply, in your application portal, there's actually these mentorship onboarding um, sections here that you literally just fill out. And that's gonna give you all the criteria um, to us to know what kind of mentor are you looking for. So that's one way, that's the normal way. What's exciting is that not only do we have a pool, but you can also make referrals. If you know somebody within your community that you think you've, or maybe you've already been working with them and you want them to mentor you, you can refer them to Futurepreneur. One, they're going to be able to mentor other people if that's their passion. But two, it's a simple onboarding process. Once that's completed, they can be your mentor and you'll receive the disbursement. So what's exciting is that one of our uh, Indigenous entrepreneurs has recently applied. She got $60,000. That opened up all these other doors because for some other funding, you need a certain amount of capital. Now she's got all this money flowing to her business. And she wanted to have Jennifer Harper, for those who don't know, owner, founder of Cheekbone Beauty, big deal. And she asked Jennifer, hey, would you want to be my mentor? Jennifer says, sure, I'd love to. She onboarded, that process completed. As a result, Jennifer Harper is now mentoring one of the entrepreneurs we funded. So that's kind of how that mentorship aspect works on top of Joanne and our team 
um, you know, of course, being able to do that mentorship, onboarding and recruiting peeps um, as we go. So that's uh, the long version of that. Yeah. The way to think of the way the 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 way to think about it is it's kind of like a dating app in a way, because we really we, we spend a lot of time to, to get a good match. You know, some entrepreneurs like um, what uh, what Justin just just said, they might already be working with a mentor that they want to continue work with or they've identified a mentor that they want to work with. So we have the flexibility for them to do a self-referral, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll just a little bit more about the mentors. So they're volunteers. And so how our recruiting lens for mentors is people who want to give back and usually like want to have, have experience to share that's relevant to a startup entrepreneur. So a lot of our mentors are experienced entrepreneurs or the two main professional categories that most of our entrepreneurs um, re request support in and mentor matching in is help around their financial planning and cash flow planning and, 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 and strategic planning on that, um, as well as selling. A lot of people aren't comfortable selling. They don't know the difference between selling and marketing. Um, so marketing professionals, selling professionals are also um, people who we recruit as well. Um, any Rock, other, oh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, great. Any other questions? Are there any potential entrepreneurs on the call? <laughs> So I see there's a question here. Oh, Sophia asked it. Uh, do you have a budgeting resource for developing that sustenance number? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, you can use the temp, you can like duplicate the template and then just go through your bank statements, your financial statements, and just input all of the expenses you have and it'll tally it up for you. Um, or you can just put it in your own spreadsheet and just calculate it. Um, there's no fancy way to do it, but... Mm -hmm. That would be my short answer to that one. Mm -hmm. Go for it, Alki. Ask away. Ask yeah. away. I'm sure you've got questions that um, that others may be thinking, but maybe a little too shy to ask. So if you you go for it, happy to answer them. I'm I'm always willing to ask questions. The real trick with me is getting me to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, this one. This one isn't so much of a, a plip, applicable um, operational aspect. It's more of a theory aspect. So one of the things that I've been encountering when it comes to that one-on-one -on -one mentorship that I'm doing with other Indigenous entrepreneur, entrepreneurs is at first, they want to hear what I have to say. They're like, yes, you have the knowledge. You have this, you have this. I have you know, experience in the finance world. I have experience internationally and domestically. But I'm finding with a lot of traditionalists, there's a pushback. Well, what do you know? Who do you know? And at first they're really eager. Do you have any safety nets in place to help those individuals that are starting to get the, this is too much, this is too overwhelming. And they start backing off from that information that you're, you're providing them. Huh. I think my initial, so, uh, sorry, go ahead, John. No, go ahead. No, go Justin. It's all good. That's cool. Um, I think like initially, um, when I'm engaging with entrepreneurs, I don't, uh, I actually don't necessarily deliver anything they don't, they don't want me to deliver. So what I mean is when I first connect with an IYE indigenous young entrepreneur that might be looking for financing or looking just reached out and connected through our, our online, you know, templates or portal, whatever. Um, my first question to them is one, tell me about yourself. Building rapport, relationships before profit is super important for us as a team. Secondly, I ask them, what are you hoping to get out of this call? Because then I'm going to be able to identify what it is they're looking for. Oh, I just wanted an overview of what future Pinar is. Cool. Give them an overview. So I think that's one way I mitigate it before it happens, right? I think I, I want to inquire with them what it is you're looking for first. 
some people aren't even looking for financing. They literally just wanted to know what Future Panora is all about. And, and uh, that's part of their motivation. And then I think in closing, I think Joanne might be able to do a way better job at uh, elaborating this last piece, but um, I'm, I'm here, right? If, a few, if an entrepreneur is, is having trouble or insecurities or anxieties or stresses, they can just reach out and be like, hey, I'm stressing about this thing. We can have a conversation. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not here for that specifically, um, but I can at least support you through the entrepreneurial context. Um, so I think that would be my, my response to that question, Elki. I think having the mentor is another resource that Futurepreneur is providing. If, if the entrepreneur is feeling a little bit nervous about something, they can always have access to their mentor as an additional someone to talk to. Um, but I think, you know, a holistic approach to wellness, finding your balance is something every individual should be doing ongoing. And it may not necessarily be on the hands of a future panor on the hands of, of lenders, but I think it is a responsibility for everybody to ensure that the support is there um, so that their mental health is, is in balance and their well-being is in balance. So we, we try to be as available as we can. You're on mute there, Joe. Um, I will say though, as a, as a practice, if, you, if you're continuing to do the kind of like being a mentor for people in your community. Um, with our um, entrepreneurs and the mentor matching, they, they sign like a structured document about what the relationship is, is gonna be. And things like um, our expectation on our mentors that sign up with us when they're matched is that they would meet with um, their matched entrepreneur up to four hours a month that on average, so that depending on what works for that relationship, maybe that's, you know, they meet every second month for a strategy session for the day, right? That's, I know a mentor that I work with, um, colleague um, who does that, you know, like they, they work it out, but they have to have a structure. So that's my advice is that when you're entering into a mentoring relationship with somebody, have a short document framing like, what, what is your relationship? What do you hope to, what are you giving? What are they, what are you, you know, what, what's the relationship foundation? And then just, just to give it some boundaries because this mentors are not consultants. So an entrepreneur might, and this is part of why we do the, the vetting in the beginning with the entrepreneur and the mentor, um, you know, your mentor isn't going to do your budgeting. Your mentor isn't going to um, write up your financial statements. They will guide you um, on questions you might have about those statements or your cash flow planning. They'll have conversations with you, um, that kind of thing. So it's important that, you know, the expectation on you isn't too high, right? And I think just to, just one more thing to, to add to that question, I think it's a, a very important question. But it's just reflecting on what, you know, we've been discussing previous with Kristen and, and Sophia at First Works is like, how do you stay motivated, right? How do you, how do you get through those struggling times when, yo, look, I'm an entrepreneur. I was self-employed before working with Futurepreneur. There was a time, and I'm saying this because I'm past it now. There was a time where I came home and my lights were cut because I couldn't afford to pay my hydro bill. Okay. Like I was literally laughing through it and my, I have a roommate and he's like, when is the power going to be turned on? I'm like, yo, I'm working on it. And it was literally to a point where it's like, he was questioning, like, why are you laughing through this? I'm like, cause I'm going to be able to tell this story in the future and be able to laugh about it then. So why not laugh about it now? Because I know that I'm going to be working my butt off to make sure I have a successful career. So I only bring that up in context that one of the most important things that I feel people should know when you're going into starting a business that your sense of purpose and your why has to be more important than the struggle it has to if you're going into business for the money you literally failed from the get-go if you're going into business because you're trying to provide value for the community trying to buy, provide value for your industry or for your market that's going to be worth the headache so just know that your sense of purpose 
and your why has to be more important. So when you're, when you're thinking of your mission statement and your vision statement, make sure it's deep enough that when you're writing it, you're like almost crying. It's so deep. You feel me? Like it has to be that important. So when it comes to overcoming stress and mental health, anxiety and all that thing, because I've experienced that and I still experience it today, I get anxiety doing these type of presentations. But what, what really pushes me through those, those anxiety moments is that I know that I'm doing this for the greater good of my community, of our people, of the future and the next generation. So I'm willing to put up with it. I'm willing to go through it. I'm willing to go through the mud. So sense of purpose and why will really help push you through those difficult moments on top of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Justin. Um, we do have some other questions, so I'm going to read them out. Um, so, um, so you, I see someone asked a question about the application process. So I do, I do want to say a little something on this. I know you answered it, but we don't have like a time that you apply. People apply at four in the morning. People apply at, you know, so it's whenever you're ready to apply. And the, and, and the initial application, as Justin said, is a business plan and a two-year cash flow. Um, I definitely encourage any of you who, are, who have ideas and want to apply to sign up first so you can get, get connected to, whether it's Justin or, or, or another part of the business development team, for coaching on your application. So they can review your application and say, hey, this is awesome, doesn't need any more work, or you know what, you need to do a bit more work. So it really um, depends, but it is about, if you're a motivated mindset, you already like you're gonna do this, it does take about four to six weeks. Um, if you need help, some people just apply um, online without touching anybody, any of our team. And if they have a great business plan and cash flow, it might take a week. But COVID has slowed things down a little bit. Um, but the, the main things that um, apply to an application is if an entrepreneur is not being responsive to, um, to us regarding what we're asking in terms of document, documentation or whatever, then that obviously affects the timeline as well. Um, and this is a very important question here brought up um, as well. What other resources or support do you offer applicants if they don't get approved. So um, very good um, to highlight. And many people don't get approved. Um, the two main things are, we have a whole adjudication team in our national office, which is in Toronto, and they are the final go, no go. And the business viability has to be strong, has to be super strong. It has to be clear in the business plan that that this will work. And our adjudication team, they, they're they knowledgeable, they've been doing, they, they know how to assess business plans. And um, so the business viability, which just means, is this business gonna work? And is this entrepreneur the right person to um, launch this business? In terms of what you bring, your skill, your talent, your orientation, um, and, Often, um, if people aren't, aren't approved and it's more of an issue, it's less on the business viability, more maybe on their credit history, maybe they need to build up a better credit score. If you the key things with any lenders or anyone, any external financing is pay your bills, don't get into collections. If you do deal with it, we recommend um, the Credit Counseling Foundation of Canada um, as a referral, we do not do credit counseling. We're not credit counselors, um, but we do have, which we're gonna start sharing more with all of our entrepreneurs. We do have some credit videos now, which, which we never had before. Just recently, um, we have them, um, their credit education videos. That is a big barrier for a lot of young people. So all you young people out there, if you have a cell phone, pay your bill on time, it affects your credit rating. Um, you know, don't don't leave a hydro bill unpaid and then move because that goes with you. Yeah, and if I can, I love I love that answer, Joe. And I think um, one of the things that really helped me when I first started working here is is understanding the value of your credit. <clears throat> and I had no idea the value of my credit. I almost didn't even get this job because of my credit. 
full transparency, right? And since I've been able to be aware of my credit, I've went from uh, below like a 500 score to above 600 in a matter of months because I started to understand it. I was able to repair my credit. So that's one thing to also highlight about what Joe's saying is that your credit can be repaired. Mm -hmm. And one way to repair that is to pay your bills on time and just make sure you're not defaulting. Um, and I think your credit should be, you should be checking your credit the same way you go and do a dental check. It should just be common, common knowledge, a common practice. Do I have any cavities on my credit score? Are those cavities even mine? Did they come from me? Right. And if you have errors on that credit report, you want to make sure you're fixing them because that could be a sign that someone is literally trying to hack you. So like, there's all these different things that are really important with the credit. And Joanne, the only reason I really know a lot of this information is because I did the credit uh, training just yesterday. And so going through those videos really helped increase my knowledge on it. And uh, I think do, knowing your credit is one of the reasons you won't get funding. But in closing, if you don't get funding from Futurepreneur by going through this process, at the end of the day, you're a bitter entrepreneur. Why? You did a business plan and you have a cash flow. Three, you know where your eligibility is. Oh, I didn't get approved. Why is that? Your credit's too low. Okay, let me fix that. Come back later. You can always repair yourself on that journey. And at the end of the day, you're a better entrepreneur at the end of, at the, at the end of that journey. And so you're equipped. You got the resources. So it's really up to, to your sense of purpose to pull you through that moment where you didn't necessarily get approved. Thanks, Justin. Um, yeah, and and we we know we know uh, you know money is money is 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 money and borrowing money and and capital can be very scary. Um, but it's important to develop a healthy relationship with asking about money. Asking, you know, like any of you can can call any bank, any credit union, futurepreneur, and ask us questions. You know, you, that is your right uh, as, a, as an individual. Um, and it's our job to respond. Um, and so just build those relationships. That's what it takes. You just have to, like Justin said, like relationships before profit, build the relationship with us, with if, that, if that's appropriate, you know, but with, if you don't have a bank account, you know, it's a good idea to get one. Don't use money marts and all, like they, they're terrible for you. They, you know, like you need to establish a financial um, background. Like I think of my son, you know, he's 20 and he, he's, it's, a lot of this is personality driven, but he is so interested in money. And so he's constantly, you know, researching about it, learning about investing, you know, because you can, you can go online and, and you can, you can, if you're motivated that way. He was so excited when he first went into the bank to set up his Scotia account, you know, he put on his good, you know, took off his sweats and put on his nice jeans and his button down and they treated him well, you know. So anyway, just a bit of advice from a mom. <laughs> And don't downplay mothers. Mothers are some of the most powerful beings in this entire planet. And nobody did not come into this world. Everyone came from a woman. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> do not downplay the power of a woman. Real talk. Yeah. Awesome. Loving the enthusiasm. Um, I just want to let everyone know that we will be opening it up to the open networking session very soon. Um, I'm just going to have Sophia pop on as we complete our upcoming RBC survey. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Wow, what an amazing discussion today. I am like ready to start a business, but I think I've said this before. I have no ideas. So I have no why right now. I'm going to find that why, do my best. Um, so uh, at this moment in time, we are going to ask all attendees uh, to complete that survey that you've probably come to know very well. Um, by completing the survey, 
uh, maybe a second or a third time, you will be entered into that draw to win. We have two $50 gift cards available. Um, so what I will request is for you to complete the survey and send a screenshot upon completion to my email address. Give me, I'm talking with my hands while I should be popping things into the chat, my apologies. Um, but um, we'll have about 10 minutes um, to whip up that uh, survey. If you, the quicker you get it in my inbox, yes, I'm gonna pop it in, in the chat in just a second. Um, and then that way we can move on to uh, the open networking um, with your full attention being able to be provided to the speakers. Um, so just give me a second. And um, here is the survey. And of course, I'm getting a phone call at the same time. Um, so uh, to our speakers, if you want to take a quick shake it out break, um, get a glass of water or whatever, we'll be back here in just about seven minutes. Yep, that's exactly it. Um, we'll be back here in about seven minutes um uh to move on to the open networking uh i am uh, manning the home booth here so uh for any of our attendees completing the survey if you have any questions um please feel free to ask me <laughs> just trying to keep an eye on everyone um i'm just gonna broadcast a message we're Doing rapid fire. fire rotations today. Swap again at two fifty. Um, sorry, I am focused now. Yes, Shiva, um, we should absolutely have a conversation about like, like, because you seem very motivated and I'm like curious to know if you're, if like you have a product or like a service or something that you're trying to like get off the ground in terms of entrepreneurship. Um, so like, I'm just like totally sure. interested in that. Um, but also like, so, so our team at First Work, um, we have like our youth voice and our youth initiative through Spire. And that's where we do these like career exploration type events. Um, and it's really our opportunity to kind of, you know, first of all, tell folks, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what resources are out there. Right. Like, um, and so, um, so, so we do this kind of work and we also work with employment service providers, you know, to, to make sure that we're putting on programming, um, that is like relevant. Um, so either, you know, labor markets are telling us that, okay, this is something we might want to focus in local demand, um, but also just like what young people are interested in. Um, and so we have a very involved youth council, um, who I like can't speak speak highly enough of. Um, and a couple of them are present today, which is really lovely. Um, and so, um, forgive me, I don't know off the top of my head um, when our next recruitment is for our youth council, but like that would be definitely an opportunity to get like more directly involved with what we do. Um, I definitely encourage you to check out our website. I've been browsing. Um, yeah okay awesome awesome that's great um yeah i i can't help myself i love to help people <laughs> and, and i i don't know a lot of my friends usually come to me for like advice or just to talk things through um and i like to share perspective like i've i'm only 27 but i've had a pretty life lessened learning life <laughs> yep. yep um and I feel like I have a lot to offer yeah. and so that's also what I'm trying to do with like I've learned a lot about self-love in this past year and I've dived deep into various types of traumas mm -hmm. um uh attachment style behavior styles and I've learned how to pull myself out of situations where, like, if I'm feeling, like, 
like when I'm feeling a little bit of like self-loathing or um and I'm just like wait what are you doing this is not this is nothing we do yeah and I'm like it's okay and the thing is it's not to say like you can't feel your emotions but you should feel them experience them but don't hold on to them past the time that you needed them you know like yeah no for sure and some people don't know how to like um catch it in their head and just like in everything in life it's taught and we um we learn how to uh we learn how to make adjustments we learn how to remove things that no longer serve us just like how our brain naturally tries to protect us when something bad happens it covers up those memories and we don't realize that these things also cause trauma within our bodies and prevent us from going further because mm -hmm. like at the end of the day in life we the whole point is to learn a lesson yeah get, take what you can from it and what no longer serves you let it go yeah don't allow it to stay within you even though you some people don't realize that it's still attached to them whether it's in your body your mental or mm -hmm. but there are ways it shows out in your habits whether it's like you're you unconsciously sabotage yourself when you want to try something new and then you're like maybe i won't get it because like well there's other there's other people but it's like no if you want that thing it doesn't matter what other people have to offer because you're unique, right? Exactly. You could have exactly. something even better to bring to the table or you can have that thing that the other person doesn't. Everyone has their own unique style of presentation. So it's about understanding that you, that individual, we all have something that the world needs. It's about learning what that is and being authentic to who you are and speaking it. Definitely, definitely. So, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just moving people around. If I look like I'm not listening as well um, as I should be, so my apologies there. Um, and um, let's see. there. Okay, perfect. Um, I so resonate with everything that you just said. Um, like that is absolutely learnings that I know that I am familiar with, or maybe things that I haven't done as well as I would have liked to during this past year, like truly, truly. Um, I would, uh, and there are a couple of things that jump to mind for me, for you. First and foremost, there's this organization called Generation Chosen. I don't know if you've heard of them. I have not, but it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, they are really cool. They do facilitation training um, specifically for um, BIPOC youth. And we actually just did a facilitation training with them, and it's all based on the on the concepts of you know emotional intelligence and knowing yourself and being able to you know. Um, having the tools to, to empathize with people that you're working with. Um, da, da, da. Okay, sorry. Um, so first and foremost, check them out. I have a feeling that you might be interested in their work. Thank you, Ashley. Um, the, um, the other person that comes to mind, oh my gosh, it, his name is Khalil Dorel, I'm fairly certain. And he is he, uh, I want to find him. Why am I thinking that? Um, um, I'll, I'll have to find it offline um, and, and get his name over to you um, because I'm somehow off. I'm close to his name, but I'm not quite there. Um, he has started his own um, um, kind of not a training program uh, by any means, but almost like his own speaker series or like he's trying, he's marketing himself as a speaker yeah, on these things. That's what I'm trying to do with my, well, I would like to, I'm trying to create a YouTube channel right now. Okay. I want to do those where I create, a, I want to create a platform. I'm, I am ideating a platform that I'm working on. And okay. I have products also that I make that I also found that helped me to like, um 
like I make natural skincare products and I make oh, natural essential I mix natural essential oils into like scents that are common that are like yeah. that are anxiety or if you feel stressed or if you just want to feel something that's sweet that makes you feel mm, yeah sweet. that feeling so I I work a lot with um with a lot of natural herbs uh bath salts like I make um that I can show you. So just give me a Do you have them? Okay, yeah. Um, and all out of candles. Um, so I make natural bath, bath salts and candles and body salves. Like if you have pain in your body, like I'll make. Yeah. And this is one of the packaging for the bath. Oh, gorgeous. Um, I ran out of my candles, <laughs> but the cans are like. A good so problem. Like a good problem to have. <laughs> um, and then this is like my brand called Ava Grace. Oh, neat. Okay, wait. So, so where are you? First of all, like, like we need to show you off a little bit, right? Like, let's give a shout out to you in your own business. I literally, um, I literally, oh, thank you, Ashley. <laughs> I literally just like, um, my friend and I, we literally just were like, let's try, so let's do an experiment. We just created <sighs> like, we were just doing work. I was creating a bunch of stuff. I've always wanted to make products and stuff like that. She does her jewelry business. Yeah. And so we created an Instagram page. So before we did that, we did like our brand and stuff, how we wanted to look. Um, I have an Instagram page. It's called Ava Grace. Um, okay. Hello. Wait, um, I'm going to just look it up <laughs> right away. <laughs> um. It looks like this. Oh, love it. And then I make like a- Love it. So these are all like affirmations and posts that I created. Yeah. I have photos and stuff done, but the thing is, um, I am I posted some stuff and I created a lot of marketing and I created a lot of um, digital art and stuff for it. But I am rebranding because I realized I want to group it together with Sheba Speaks or right. the other name that I have for it and I'm trying to formulate how to actually bring it all together which is why like I thought this was an awesome opportunity which is why I joined it yeah so on how to compile it. um but yeah like I just it's just like I write and I send out um like one of the things that I wrote is I am proud of you and who you are not your potential <gasps> Because we have this, we all get this into this mindset where we feel like we're not whole. We need yep. to work on something. If yep. we don't do this in time, we're not who we're supposed to be. But really and truly, like, we came into this world perfectly made just as yeah. we are. Because we're here to teach and to learn and to encourage and to be and to just work as a complete ecosystem. Totally. Right? because we let our ego and our hurt and other things lead us yeah that's not that's not the whole journey that's just a part of it that's just the first step right so once we Sorry. get into that mind state and we learn to just have compassion with ourselves just like how we treat someone if someone's having a problem we're like are you okay talk to me i'll listen to you we have to look at ourselves we have to sit in the mirror and have that same conversation with ourselves mm -hmm. and be like I love you and you're beautiful. Like in the morning, I'll wake up and I'm like, good morning. How are you? And I'll give myself a kiss. <laughs> I love this. For those of you who just came back into the, Shiva and I are just oh. having a wonderful discussion. <laughs> and um, and Shiva is somebody that uh, is a budding entrepreneur herself. And I would love for her to type in uh, her business uh, Insta handle um, into the chat. And if anybody else on the line, uh, apologies for the notifications, um, anybody else on the line has a business, 
this is like, this is community, right? This is our network. Um, let's lift each other up. Uh, so definitely we'd love to shout you out. Um, so, so send it our way. Um, I'll, I'll turn things back over to, to Kristen so I can stop talking. Awesome. So just before we wrap up officially, um, as we conclude our, our series and just before we do our gift card giveaways, um, I really want to thank Joanne and Justin for facilitating today's business planning workshop. Um, thank you for all the work that you do at Futurepreneur Canada and helping youth launch their entrepreneurial dreams. It truly is um, admiring seeing, hearing all the success stories, and I can't wait to hear about um, youth potentially today who may take their, their next step. Um, I also want to thank our exhibitors, Project Chris from Project Integrate. Um, we had Brian today from Business in the Streets. I know this was a very rapid fire um, networking session. I will include their information and their resources in my follow-up email today. But most importantly, I want to thank you, all of our youth participants, um, our ESP attendees who participated in this series. I know it's been a long three days. I hope that you were able to network, learn, meet with people within your networks um, and expand your network. And I just wanna let you know that we have another exciting career exploration event taking place at the end of May. This event will focus on career opportunities within the arts and creative industries. So more details to come in the following weeks. In the meantime, please follow our youth um, aspire on Instagram for updates. Um, okay, we got about a minute left. Without further ado, we're going to be doing our gift card draw. So the first winner that we have. <laughs> I'm going to jump off real quick, but it's a pleasure seeing everybody. Thank you for yeah. having me here. Much love. I have an appointment at three, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ready for that. So yeah. Stay. Thank you for I joining to, us. Yeah. I'm going to run to thank you. And please do follow up with us. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Later. Ciao. Just thank putting you. my email in the chat for y'all one more time. All right. Thank you. Okay. Peace. We'll see you later. All right. So our first winner that we have, sorry, I'm just pulling it up. Chantel Howe, H-O-W-E, last name. Are you here? Yes. I see you in the chat. Yes. All right, awesome. So congratulations to Chantal. I will be sending you a direct email um, um, confirming your prize with more details. And the second winner that we have for today, Shiva Toussaint. Ooh, that was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Song. Congratulations as well. Congratulations to both of our winners for today. Um, I will, I'll be following up with you as well, but I want to also thank everyone here in attendance who, who attended um, all three sessions and completed all three surveys. Once again, congratulations to our winners. Um, I will be following up uh, with all of you with um, an email later today or tomorrow. We hope to see you at our next upcoming event in May. Please do follow us on Instagram um, and we hope to see you there. And uh, if you are interested in any of those resources from our friends at BITS or our friends at Project Integrate, those will be included in the uh, thank you emails that you'll be receiving. So uh, you'll have a, a handle on all of those. Thanks all so much. Great participation today. Thank you. Have a good day. Sophia, Kristen, thank you guys so much for putting this on. The wealth of knowledge that was shared today in the last three days was phenomenal. So I want to say 
many nyawas and mikwiches and all the good stuff to the both of you and the entire team at First Works for helping us all. Yes, thank you so much. Really beautiful. beautiful. Wonderful experience. Thank you so much for attending. We'll see you soon. Yes. Thanks all. Bye, everyone. I will email you, Sophia. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, and then we're all gonna check out uh, Ava Grace. Grace, Ava, I, it's like so, uh, I'm following on Instagram. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, and Chantal, I see that you're still uh, on the call as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, you'll get an email from from Kristen directly regarding your your gift card. Thank you again, everyone.